Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with me. I am having a lot of fun with this. Uh, I'm having fun waking up with you, kind of going through that morning timeline, first thing together, picking things apart a little bit, kind of looking at what's out there and how to really discern it. Because I just saw a tweet, just scrolling real quick. Um, and it was about men getting completely black pilled by the the red pill space. And this is kind of one of the reasons why I'm here is because if you understand female nature and if you understand how to play the game of female nature so that you're in control, you you see, you foresee the things that are coming uh, your way. You expect the behaviors that you're seeing in the girls around you. And you know how to handle it in the best way in order to keep your frame and keep control of the situation. Everyone wins. She benefits because she's not able to just spin out into an oblivion. You benefit because your life is not negatively impacted by her behavior. And then you can realize that women are not really a mystery. This whole thing, women are a mystery, is complete rubbish. I've never used that word before in my life other than in teasing, but it fits. Girls are not a mystery. The better you understand women and the better that you can read this, the less angry you get from, from their natural nature and the more you are able to stay in control of it. So this is why I do what I do. And it's a passion of mine. I mean, I, I think that when you're naturally good at something and you, you know, uh, have people who, see that you're a natural, it goes a long way in enjoying it. <laughs> Let's start here. So first thing I want to start with is something a little bit different because Fort Worth has a impersonator, we'll call it. Um, he goes by Fort Worth Playboy 1. And if you are getting DMs or getting friend requests or follows or whatnot, from Fort Worth one, that is not Fort Worth Playboy that you know and love uh, and trust. So keep in mind, he, he this person um, retweets a lot of our stuff, but what, he's, what we're figuring out he's doing is, because we were trying to figure out kind of what the, the push was, because if he's just sharing our stuff, then that's sharing, you know, adding to our bottom line and our, you know, way of life. However, he's jumping in people's DMs. He's DMing and um, it sounds like he's offering like a, a crypto mentoring program, which is definitely not <laughs> Fort Worth because if you know Fort Worth, the real one, you know that, um, you know that he has that he thinks that that is about as boring as they can get. So anyway, if you get a DM from Fort Worth Playboy one, that is not our Fort Worth. Now, if you're interested in random, uh, uh, global markets, um, mentoring from an unknown person who's impersonating someone else, then go on, on in, go ahead and answer that DM. All right, let's jump into what is going on in our neck of the woods this morning. Ralph, I love his stuff. He's always got good stuff. He's like a very Italian guy in New York. He's a chiropractor. He puts out a lot of good stuff about health and just kind of longevity and, and living a, a great life. He has a real problem with people putting sugar in spaghetti sauce, you know, things like that. Stop wanting to sleep an extra 20 minutes in the morning. Wake up, get out of bed, open your window and shades, start your day. This is 
I think the one of the most important habits that humankind can get a, a hold of is actually just getting out of bed when they set their alarms. If you can conquer that, you can win anything. Um, I've been I've been listening to a lot of the, and I know it's like three years too late, but I've been listening to a lot of the podcasts of the. 75 hard lately. I'm going to stay on this because, and a lot of that is all about just mental toughness, mental, you know, getting past some of the hurdles that people deal with in their everyday lives that keep them from being the best version of themselves, which you know is my thing. I want you to be not a cookie cutter of what I think a handsome man or a successful man looks like, but to pick out in your brain what your best version of yourself is and work every single day of your life to become that and to maintain that because that's the problem with goals. People tend to make goals. They tend to reach the goal and then they let it all go. That's, that's not going to get you very far. So, if you can conquer this, you can go a long way in life and with women. Let's see. What is this? I have a feeling this guy's going to catch this with his bare hand and be completely cool about it. Typical Botham shot, and that's gone down the ground for a great six and a magnificent catch by the Channel 9 <laughs> cameraman down there. Cool as a cucumber. That's a crash. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Never, never with the cigarette out of his mouth. That's pretty hot. That guy got laid. I can assure you that guy got lots of attention from that. Oh man. If you think you're having a bad day, Dan 21 split with his girlfriend a day before her family won $61.7 million. Everyone, including her sister, Sister's boyfriend got 12 million. Oh. <laughs> you probably, listen, Dan still probably dodged a bullet. There was a reason that he split with her. It was because he didn't see a future or didn't want to. This is the problem with guys um, kind of sticking with girls for the wrong reasons. It does not make it better. It doesn't make the problems go away. You know, sometimes toughing it out just makes your life less pleasant and, um, you know, a, a lower quality of life. So uh, if you're just dating someone, especially when you see the red flags that you know you absolutely can't live with, go on about your way. It's just, it, it's not even bad luck that, that the family won all this money the day after, but that's pretty funny. What else is here? These batteries. Oh, I thought that was going to be batteries next to a bunch of dildos. I love Steven's story stuff. If you did not catch my interview with him, uh, the bunny interviews, and he was my special guest, Steven story. He always puts out fire stuff about living your best life, about really designing a life that um, gives you financial and location freedom. He's a great guy. He um, teaches insurance adjusting primarily for the sake of you being able to truly have a great life. So I encourage you to follow Steven's story, if you don't already, let's listen to this. Maybe. Maybe. Don't, boo. You should be submissive to me, actually. Yeah, that's that's not a message that we want shared in our neck of the woods. That's terrible advice. No man, even no a grandma. 
No woman respects a man who is submissive to her. Make no mistake. Girls love to pretend like they love to be large and in charge. They love to pretend like they want to make the decisions in the relationship with the kids, with all of these things. And I'm talking about primarily American women. There are cultural differences um, that are aside from what I'm talking about right now. They do not apply outside of like North America generally, but for the most part, the, the people that I'm talking to and the women that you're dealing with do not find it sexy or appealing to be sub, for you to be submissive to them in any way. They want you to lead. They want to follow. They want to, um, they want to um, follow your lead. They, they will not respect a man, no matter how much large and in charge they like to be, they will not respect a man in the long run if he is the submissive one in the relationship. I don't know if I'm having a connection issue. Let me see about this. Let me try. Let's see about this. Let me text, text y'all for a second. So I want to encourage you absolutely do not buy into any of the, any of the propaganda about girls wanting, wanting to lead, wanting to find a man who they can be partners with. This is a lovely word and it can be very uh, true in, in that you want to feel like you're, working with someone that you enjoy, that you work well with, that you live well with, that you do life well with. But the more you tend to submit decision-making, the important stuff, like the raising of the children, the, the deciding about your home, the deciding about cars, big decisions need to be made by you primarily. So don't, don't doubt that for a second that, um, that she wants you to lead. She wants you to be the leader of the relationship. She wants you to be the leader of the household. Never forget it because it's always been true and it'll always be true. And that, you know, even these hardcore feminist types are, are often, going to soften to um, your direction and your frame over the long haul. So if you like a girl, if you genu generally get along with her, I highly recommend that you, that you control the frame and do not give up control of the relationship to her and any decisions that you're making. Okay. I believe that we are back online. If the connection was spotty on your side, I apologize. It was looking like it was dragging on mine. So I just kind of restarted stuff. Trying to make the viewing experience more pleasurable for you. All right, let's go back to, let's talk about the tells of damaged women. Now this is good because I put up a poll um, about 12 hours ago, kind of listing uh, kind of what the biggest tells were. Oh, they retweeted my thing. So the biggest tells of damaged women, and here's what we're looking at so far. Bad relationship with dad. This is huge, guys. A bad, a, a girl who has a, a negative or a, a bad relationship with her father 
or no relationship whatsoever. Maybe she doesn't know him. Maybe she didn't have a father in the house. Maybe a whole slew of things. But a bad relationship with a father is a huge indicator that this girl's got some stuff going on that is incredibly unhealthy in her brain. This is the reason that I am writing right now. This is, this is just coincidental. This is the reason that right now I am writing a father's guide to raising daughters because number one, I've seen it done really well. I've seen positive outcomes of fathers who've done it right. Number two, I have a father who I believe did it very well. Uh, he's done it well as my father. He's done it well as a grandfather. Uh, and I've seen the positive outcomes of men who have followed in his footsteps, you know, men that he has mentored over the years who also have incredibly healthy families, children, extended families and whatnot. So a bad relationship with a father is absolutely detrimental to a girl's um, health and well-being. It's a game changer, a game changer. Bad relationship with a mom. Moms and daughters tend to have uh, a bit of a, con a more contentious relationship. It's, it tends to kind of ebb and flow depending on the season of life, depending on um, kind of, I, I hate to say it, but it's, it's almost a cruel reality that about the time the, the daughters are going through puberty and really going through these hormonal changes and, and getting really kind of emotionally driven is about the same time the mothers are generally starting to go through menopause and struggling with losing their appearance, struggling with their own emotional roller coaster, starting to exactly, exactly um, lose their own looks. It's a competitive time of life for most women. And this is also, you'll see this on Facebook in particular where there's a point there where, where you almost feel guilty and bad that the mom is posting pictures with the daughter because the daughter is 16, 17, 19 and stunning and youthful. And what the mom essentially looked like at that age or better. And then there's the mother who's hitting menopause. Her appearance has started going. Maybe she didn't take care of herself in the first place. And so she was able to skate by through her, you know, twenties, thirties, maybe even into her forties. But then her appearance is starting to really take a nosedive and it's, and it's starting to be more visible. That's where you feel so bad when these, these moms post pictures with their daughters and Sometimes I think they see it. Sometimes uh, I think that they're kind of oblivious or they've already written it off to, well, you know, I'm, I'm of that age now. So, so back to the biggest tells of damaged women, bad relationship with dad, huge bad relationship with mom. I put that in there specifically to kind of show the, the, the vast difference between how critical a relationship of, uh, between daughter and father is versus the relationship between daughter and mother. Unnatural hair colors. So the purples, the, the oranges, the blues, the greens, all of these unnatural hair colors that girls will wear um, that have, kind of, they kind of go through seasons of being uh, very popular. The sleeve tattoo is the same. I think a full on sleeve is a sign of extreme damage. Um, but at the same time, somebody even, even tweeted, like commented in here that the, the tattoos on women are becoming so mainstream. It's, 
it's almost like um, it's almost like the average weight of America in particular, but I think worldwide to a certain extent. As the average body weight of men and women continues to go up, the eye is skewed to thinking that that is normal and average uh, and healthy. And it's absolutely not. Mo the, the average weight of people anymore is actually an, a level of obesity. It's, it's not my 600 pound life, but it's certainly not healthy and it's not healthy for generations to come. The same is true for the, the sleeve tattoos, for the multiple tattoos, for the, the patchwork of tattoos that are, um, that cover women's bodies in a plethora of ways. Um, it's, it's getting so normative that, that you almost don't notice it anymore like the obesity. So if you have not uh, chimed in on this, there are 15 hours left to vote. I would love to get your input and I'd love to see, you know, what you have to say in the comments also. So um, please do jump in on there if you have time. Let's see. Where am I? Oh, I'm in notifications. No wonder I'm only seeing my own stuff. Somehow I ended up over there when I reset everything. What's happening? I'm attracted to guys that are assholes. That's because asshole game works. It's not kick the dog asshole. It's not, um, be a jerk all the time, but there is uh, an aloof indifference. There's a natural selfishness. There's an outcome independence that goes a long way for girls because then we will value that you uh, have self-importance, that others see your importance, that um, you're not going to let us get away with anything. This is all self, self, self uh, subconscious but it causes us to have our vagina tingles and it works. So it works not only in the initial attraction of women to be a little bit of an asshole, but it also works in maintaining your frame for a lifetime. I mean, think of your grandfather. Was he the softest, sweetest human being? Or did you know that if, if, if he said something, it was, you know, ironclad, it wasn't going to change. He wasn't going to be, um, you know, tilted in his belief system by his wife pitching a fit or begging or crying. Women love assholes. If you want to maintain a lifetime of a frame and the strength of your relationship, a little asshole goes a long way. If you need help with that, please feel free to pick up uh, Chicks Dig Jerks from Fort Worth Playboy because it's a great collection of writings from Chateau Hartis about asshole game. Boomer Entertainment, that's too funny. Joe Pesci. God, he's funny. Guys, I, this out of tech, out of context human account cracks me up every time. It's the most random stuff, but it just cracks me up every time. Ooh, what this? Now this is a great fashion show. It's got girls who actually have bodies and curves, not just stick figures, but not unhealthy level of curve. Yes, please. That's fantastic. That woman is stunning. <laughs> 
Now I'm going to get all kinds of stuff like that. Okay. Comment in the, the chat box or comments down below if you're watching after the fact. I think that under boob and side boob are highly under undervalued uh, body parts. What do you think the most undervalued body part on a woman is? I am dying to know. Please comment. Please jump in there and let me know your thoughts. Uh, I also like the little, the little um, kind of dimples at the, at the back of the hips. That's very sexy. Um, the back of the neck is always attractive. I want to know your thoughts. What, what is the sexiest and most undervalued part of a woman's body? I want, I want your opinion. All of this is boring. Let's see. Would girls be able to Twitter if guys never let them know about the wall or mid? Oh. <sighs> Sometimes Ryan just seems angry. <laughs> okay, that's just funny. Let's see. Jessica Beale, always hot. You know, I think that she did it right too because we not we don't really see her all that much. She's living her best life. She gets to be a wife and a mother. Uh, and I think that this is the way Hollywood originally designed women to uh, work, where they worked while they were young and they were in their prime. Then they used that as a platform to find the best husband that they could. They got married. They retired to um, kind of a more normal life and they loved it. They had, um, a lovely rest of their lives. They were able to age more gracefully because there wasn't as much pressure from being constantly in front of the camera, but at the same time, they had the means to keep up the, the routine of, you know, self-care without the stress of earning their own money. It's, it is such a winning combination. And I think that Jessica Biel is a great example of a modern day, Hollywood woman who did it right. Now, clearly this is an older picture because I don't think that she would be uh, taking this picture now. Uh, and she looks very young in this photo, but she is a great example of a woman who I think did it the way that you were supposed to. Grace Kelly is a classic example of this. She was in her prime. She found her prince and she married and she retired from Hollywood life. Not all, I mean, I, from my understanding and my reading and my study of Grace, she, she would have loved to have continued to act and she enjoyed the Hollywood life a little bit also and missed it, but she didn't age in front of the camera. We always had an appreciation for her much like Jessica Biel. That has nothing to do with attraction. What? I don't think this is. <sighs> hmm. I feel like there's some face swapping going on in this picture. All right, let's talk about this. She had his location. He unended, unadded and unfollowed every girl. I lived with him. I had his password. I went everywhere with him. I was with him 24 seven and he still found a way to cheat. Women get really complacent when they're in relationship with men because we assume that if you're in a relationship and you're together all the time that 
we don't really have to try that hard. I think that this is where, you know, I, I say it all the time. Let's talk about it again. This is the last thing we're going to talk about this morning. Women work on a timeline. In the first 12 weeks of relationship, they're bringing their best. They're um, always, you know, they're, they're better dressed. They're less sloppy. They're less lazy. They pick up after themselves when they come to your place. They make sure that their home is clean, uh, at least tidy enough whenever you come to pick them up if they respect you. They try. The, the 12-week mark, that three-month mark, is kind of like a trial period. At the end of that, they decide whether they want to continue relationship with you or they don't see a future with you. So a lot of times that's when you'll see their sexual interest starting to fade. That's when you'll see the messy buns and the sweatpants and the not really ever, uh, you never see even a version of like the girl that you first met. That's when she starts to emerge. Now, this could be a three to 12 month, you know, decline where she's starting to take less care of herself and ha and show you less of her best side, try less, give less, serve you less. And then women are surprised when men manage to still cheat or don't hold interest in them. Women need to, to keep trying in order to hold interest. You men need to hold frame so that you keep control of the relationship and stuff like this does not happen. I mean, guys are going to cheat if they feel the inclination. Girls always find a way where there's a desire, there is a pathway to get there and that's just all there is to it. So the fact that this girl is surprised because she was trying to control the relationship. She was controlling his location. She was with him all the time. You know, girls who, who trust their men that they're not going to cheat don't feel the need to go to these great extents. So the fact that she was doing all of these things goes to show that she, she expected this all along. Make no mistake. When you see stuff like this on your social media, know that she knew ahead of time what was coming down the pike. She spent so much time making sure that he wasn't cheating, that he had time to cheat. So that's, that's a shame on her. It's clearly caused some problems for her, uh, but maybe she'll try harder. I doubt it in the, in the, in the long run, she probably hasn't learned her lesson. Uh, and she'll, continue to date men who have that, that inclination. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's time for me to go to the gym and work out. I'm going to finish my coffee. I appreciate you being here and I will see you in 23 and a half hours. Same time, same place. <sighs> Happy Friday. Bye.